Pneumatic fluid here. I don't see any kind of membrane around the outside of it so at it all. So it be over all of that? Okay, yeah, so I'll show you this on the chart. The older version of this model has that tunica vaginal, vaginalis on it. And we can look at that in our material if you want to. So what would this be called? Well, that's tunica vaginalis too, the uh, visceral part. Visceral okay. too. And the reason I know that is when you look at the epididymis, uh, see how smooth this looks? Mm -hmm. yeah. I know that there's a coil of tubule in there. And that's the ductus epididymis. And I can't see that tubule. So that tells me there's got to be a membrane that's covering it. Mm -hmm. So there is some tunica vaginalis here. So the tunica vaginalis is complicated because it has a couple of sublayers to it. Uh, there's tunica vaginalis still on the surface of the testis too. If you peel that off, then you can actually see the wall of the testis, which is tunica al beginning. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at that on the chart so you can see the difference. But at any rate, uh, here we have the components of the spermatic cord, uh, spermatic artery and vein, ductus deferens, the inguinal canal is the tunnel right here. It's like the communication between the outside of the body and the inside. Uh, the artery and the vein go their respective ways. This model does not show them, but it does show the uh, ductus deferens coming up. This is the urinary bladder. So it goes superior to and behind the urinary bladder, and pull the sky apart. And uh, as it comes toward its end, the ductus deferens makes the ampulla. And then the ampulla is So what exactly is the ampulla? Right here. See, so it was all sort of more narrow up until that point, and then it like fattens up. Mm -hmm. So that's your ampulla. And uh, there's going to be coming from the ampulla an ejaculatory duct, and this model just shows a little piece of it right there. That's going to plug into the prostatic urethra. So as far as urethra, urethra parts, we have uh, prostatic urethra here. This is the urogenital diaphragm, and so the part of the urethra that goes right through the center of that is the membrane urethra. And then the part that runs through the center of the penis is the penile urethra, or the spongy urethra, or cavernous urethra, however you want to call it. The distal end, expanded end of the corpus spongiosum is the glans penis. In uncircumcised males, there's a prepreserved foreskin on that. The proximal end of the corpus spongiosum. And those are interchangeable words, prepus. Pardon? And prepus and uh, foreskin are interchangeable Same words. thing, yep. Okay. yep. And then proximally, the corpus spongiosum enlarges to make the, bul the bulb of the pants. Uh, the little purple thing you see there is the septum that separates the two corpora cavernosa. Uh, you can't really see the corpus cavernosum on that side. They put the septum here so you can't see it on the other, other side either. On the other model, you can see it. Um, other glands, little seminal vesicles, I told you about, right beside the ampules here and the counterpart on the other side. They all empty into that prostatic urethra where the prostate gland is here. Guess what that little dude is right there? Calper's gland. Yep, Calper's gland. All right. I think that's it.